Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Catherine Shelton and this is Isaac Gonzalez. And today we wanted to talk about our new system, Tangent Rocks, Rocks which is a new product we have developed to help you with all the products you are selling, whether they are digital or physical products. So we're talking anything from t-shirts, books, print on demand products, to your bundles and white label products on FBA. So it will help you with pretty much anything you plan on making to sell. So Isaac, what is Tangent? It's a collection of five tools integrated together to help you with your research and creativity. Awesome, so Tangent is actually five separate tools. The Niche Machine, the Formulizer, Sky Palette, Tangent Words, and the Tangent Explorer, which I believe is also available as a Chrome extension. Yes, it is. Which is pretty amazing, which means that you can use all of Tangent's capabilities pretty much anywhere on the web, whether you are looking at your blog or someone else's blog, whether you're looking at Wikipedia, public domain resources, you have the power of Tangent wherever you are. Yes. That's amazing, Isaac. So stay with us, check this out, because we're going to show you how you can use Tangent to find artwork for your projects, to generate keywords, which is really, really powerful. We have some really unique, exclusive ways to get keywords for your products and a whole lot more. It's just an amazing system. So do enjoy it and have fun learning about Tangent and how to use it to help you develop your products. So let's go and check out the first tool, which is the niche, niche machine. machine. Okay, so this is the niche machine in Tangent. Now, those of you who have used the Blue Sky Suite and Sky Tools, you may be familiar with the niche machine. This is like the next iteration of the niche machine. We've added more niches and we've added the integration with Tangent Explorer. So it's now very, very powerful tool. And the niche machine includes over 15,000 niches now all categorized and subcategorized. So you can use this for all kinds of things. It's a great place to start brainstorming. If you're trying to come up with an idea for a product, a t-shirt, a book, a coloring book, uh, homeschool products, <laughs> like all kinds of things. If you're trying to come up with an idea, the niche machine is just an amazing place to start. So let's check it out. Okay, so the first thing you'll see is there's a list of categories and we keep adding to this. So this keeps growing. All of Tangent is a living product. We Absolutely. keep updating it, we keep adding to it. And let's take a look through these lists. So one thing I love to start with is animals because everyone loves animals. And what you'll see is we have several subcategories in the niche machine. So I'm going to go with dog breeds, just because people love making doggy t-shirts, doggy products. And what you can see here is that the niche machine gives you a list of dog breeds. How cool That's is that? Cool. This is all of pretty much every dog breed you can think of. <laughs> and there's literally hundreds of them. I'm, oh not, I'm not even sure how many there are, but you're getting some, <laughs> like the blue tick coon hound, he actually gets 22,000 searches oh, a wow. month, which is amazing. Um, and the Argentine doggo? Doggo. <laughs> doggo, is, is that a real thing? Apparently so. So what is cool about this, if you come up with an idea for a t-shirt that says, I love my dog, you could actually just work your way through the niche list oh, yeah. and make one for every dog breed. breed yes. So if you want to make one for the Cardigan Welsh Corgi, you can That's... go ahead and do that. I love my Welsh Corgi. Okay, so let's talk about these numbers here. So what we have done, we have included a search volume and this search volume was originally pulled from Google. Now, a lot of tools, I know we, we, we've said this a few times, there are a lot of keyword tools out there and some of them claim to use search volumes from Amazon. Isaac, can this be done? No, no. they can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Amazon doesn't give out that data. They're very so tight lip about it. It is not possible to get search volume from Amazon directly. That is a very important thing to be aware of. If any tools are saying they are giving you Amazon search volume, 
they're lying. It's no. not possible. You cannot get Amazon search volume. So what we have done is we have pulled search volume from Google, which is not quite the same. However, it's a pretty good indicator. If people are looking for something on Google, they are more than likely looking for it on Amazon as well. And the other thing with Google data is that Amazon is usually the first result on Google searches. Yes. So if you have a product on Amazon and someone Googles, the chances are they are still going to pull up your product. So while Google data may not be perfect, we all want to know how many searches <laughs> there are on Amazon. Google data is probably the closest, most accurate representation you can get. Yes. So that is what we use and that's why we use it. I wish we could give you Amazon search volume data, but it can't be done. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at this. Now, how would I use this? Well, let's say I like beagles because everybody loves beagles. And obviously, this is going to be a really popular topic with a million searches a month on Google. So a million people are looking up beagles on Google each month. And what would I do now? What happens if I click this, Isaac? Let's find out. Okay, so clicking on Beagle actually opens up the Tangent Explorer. And what the Tangent Explorer does is really gives you all of the tools that we use personally mm -hmm. in product development. And it gives them all to you in a very easy to understand logical order. Yes. So it's divided into four tabs, Explore, Public Domain, Products and Tools. And you can actually change, this is a search bar, and you can change your search mm -hmm. at any time. Now, this tool is integrated into everything in Tangent. Every, pretty much anything in Tangent is clickable and will bring up the Tangent Explorer. And not only that, the Tangent Explorer is available as this Chrome extension. So wherever you are on the internet, wherever you are on the web, you can just select any word and open up the Tangent Explorer and go explore, go yes. off on the tangent. Hey. hey! So let's check this out. The first thing that you'll see is simple content. So let, this lets you do a quick Google search, lets you check out Wikipedia, lets you see what articles there are on Quora. Quora is actually becoming a huge place for marketers. A lot of people go and answer questions on Quora because it's a great place to draw people to your profile and to your information. And also it's a great place just to find what is currently trending, oh, yes. what is currently popular and what people want to know about beagles. So there you are, you can see there's a whole bunch of questions there. I um, love the first question, which is better, a beagle, a puggle, puggle or, a, <laughs> or pug. a pug? And so that's an interesting topic because I look at that and I'm like, hmm, can I make a t-shirt? Can I oh, make a book? Hey, can I make can a, you... a book out of it? Or, like which but which dog should I get? What, right, which, which one's better? Or if I per, had a preference, have all three and show. Yeah, the puggles are cool, but just give me a beagle. You know what I would do with that? I would probably make that into a, a small book mm -hmm. on maybe create space, or maybe I make it into an article that I could use to promote my t-shirts. Yeah. Um. But the great thing with Core is you see what people are actually looking for. Yes. And I don't want to spend too long on Cora mm -hmm. because. Check it out. There are all these other places <laughs> that you can go and look. And this is so cool because if you want to find out sort of, you're not sure what a beagle looks like. And I guess we all know what a beagle looks like. Mm -hmm. Obviously it looks like Snoopy. Um, <laughs> but if you're not sure, like for example, we looked at some of the other dogs there, what like an Argentine doggo looks like. <laughs> You could just search um, easily using Tangent to go and find that Argentine Yeah, doggo. so, I mean, Instagram is a great place. Oh, you, you chose Google Oh, I images. went with Google, but uh -huh. there are some very cute beagles. Yes. Um, yeah, you can go to Instagram and see what people are doing on Instagram with beagles. And the great thing is with Tangent, it's fast. Like yes. You can just go and search quickly. And it also, you know what's great with Instagram? It helps you find influencers. Yes. So if there's someone with a lot of followers and all they post about is beagles, they would be a good person to talk to about your beagle t-shirt and whether they might like to run a contest to win that shirt or something else that would draw publicity to your shirt. So this is pretty much all the things that are in the Tangent Explorer. First of all, you can search content, you can find images you can check on trends google trends is an awesome one like if you want to go to google trends 
find out how popular beagles are. There we go, right here you can see. Okay, they've actually been pretty steady in yeah. popularity. Really popular oh, in the US. Yeah. And you can see what kind of searches people are doing for uh, beagles. So there's a lot of information you can get from Google Trends. Uh, we also have news stories, social media. This will help you go, if you just want to find Facebook groups about beagles, boom, you can go to Facebook and here are all the groups about beagles. So again, this is great for finding influencers, places where you can talk about your beagle t-shirt or places where you can research ideas to put together your beagle book, your beagle shirt. So I love those tools there. You've also got video, of course. You can go and see what videos people are making about beagles. And now this is just amazing, Isaac. You have put together <laughs> All of the best places to go and find public domain artwork, media. I think there's even music in here. Mm -hmm. If someone happened to make a public domain beagle song, this would be <laughs> your place to go and find yes. it. But I, I mean, I love this. You can even just go to Wikimedia and quickly you find a whole bunch of pictures that should be in the public domain if they are on Wikimedia. Mm -hmm. So what I will say about this, quick disclaimer, this has a ton of sites for looking for public domain photographs. I mean, we all know kind of Pixabay and Pexels, Pixels yeah. but there's a lot of more obscure and interesting mm -hmm. ones there. The only thing I would say, if you use any public domain artwork from any website, always double check and do your own research that it is in fact public domain. Because occasionally people upload pictures that aren't in the public domain. But generally, these sites are, they are self-declared to be <laughs> in the public domain. So they're pretty good places to yeah. start. So moving on through the Tangent Explorer, you also have products. products. And I think this is really cool. So you can go and look on all the major sourcing sites for Beagle products, <laughs> which is really fun. You can go and see like maybe what are the popular Beagle products on Amazon. There you go, right here. Oh, um, you can pillow. see there's a really cute pillow. All you need is love and, and a, a beagle. beagle. And this looks like it would be a good sort of product to develop for Amazon Custom, for example. Yeah. <laughs> I love the pillow, <laughs> giant pillow. And there is a dabbing beagle. Oh. How great is that? So this is such a quick way just to do all your market and product research yes. all in one go. You can browse simply books. So if you're working on a book, an ebook, any kind of homeschool or educational products for something like Teachers Pay Teachers, for example, you can just check out books here and see. You can search just for Create Space, Create Space. books. Yes. You can search for Google Books pre-1923, which will be in the public, public domain. domain. Also, Project Gutenberg uh, has a lot of public domain books. You can search all the t-shirts on Amazon. You can search all the merch t-shirts on Amazon, which is super quick. You don't need to remember what you have to search for just to find merch t-shirts. One click takes you to all of the merch shirts on Amazon about be beagles. <laughs> and there are a lot of them, 1,500 results. I was normal two beagles ago, a dabbing beagle. Oh, another dabbing beagle. Um, the the beagles, beagles, that's awesome. <laughs> Oops, I, it, it went yeah, away because yeah. I hovered on it. Mm -hmm. um, there it is, the beagles. I think that's really cool and I just want to drink wine and pet my beagle. And this is actually a really good example, this one here, I just want to drink wine and pet my beagle. This is such a great example of how you could use the niche machine. Because let's say you come up with a t-shirt like this, I just want to drink wine and pet whatever, you can just go through that list in the niche machine and pretty much make a shirt for every breed of dog. And we've also got cat breeds, we've got animals, we've got pets, we've got all kinds of things there in the niche machine. So this is such a great, and of course, you've put in all the, these print yes. on demand sites as well. So you can go and see, like for example, Zazzle. Let's see if anyone's made Beagle related products on Zazzle and you'll see mugs, ties, doggy shirts hey. oh there's the beagles again that's a, that's a popular yep, design the pillow was um, back again the pillow <laughs> like it, this is so cool because i'm i'm searching so many different sites very very quickly and someone just asked us actually like how how can you speed up your research and i said well tangent is pretty much what i am using now 
to do my research just because it pulls everything together into one place. And then the fourth tab, like I think some of these, this is the smallest tab, but it's my favorite <laughs> because it gives you tools like the pun generator. And check this out. If you go to pun generator and look up Beagle, you just get so many cool ideas for, for like Beagle gags. So you can do like barely beagle instead of like, or beagly blonde beagly instead blonde. of legal. You could do a bald beagle. Like I love the idea that you have, maybe you have like the big US flag and instead of having a bald eagle, you have like a sad beagle with his head shaved <laughs> and he's like a bald the beagle. Bald beagle. <laughs> right? you, see, you, see, you can have desert beagle. Like you can really use all yeah. these ideas and, and just simply illustrate them. And you could ask your designer, you could say, okay, can you draw me this? But this gives you original concepts yeah. that no one else is doing. We, I mean, someone had the Beagles, which is a great pun. And you can see how popular that, that design is just because it's funny and original. This allows you to come up with your own original designs very quickly without being a comedian, without being an artist. You can find things in tangent very, very quickly. You've also got some other great tools here, like the acronym maker. I love doing acronyms. I do acronyms for lots of things. You know, when you have the word mm -hmm. down and then you just come up with things. I don't know. I can't think of anything that starts with B for Beagle. You could have bothersome, bothersome. enthusiastic, <laughs> awesome, like Action. B E A G. I don't know. Great dog. Yeah. That, that would be terrible. You can come up with better acronyms than that. But also we've got Urban Dictionary. Sometimes you've got to be a bit careful with Urban Dictionary. Every time I look at it, it gives me something naughty, Isaac. That's, <laughs> it's, it's just, it might be I, me. Um, I use it to help me understand the world around me better. To understand. Okay, so we've got <laughs> Urban Dictionary. Yeah. What is really useful on this tab as well, especially if you were doing merch by Amazon, is that you have a trademark search here. And this is really cool because with merch, Sometimes they will auto check any copy that you upload. So your features, your description of your shirt, your title. And if they find any trademarks in there that are relevant to clothing, sometimes they won't accept that design. And if you do it too many times, it's like bye bye merch account. Yeah. So this gives you a really quick trademark search. So if we want to find out if Beagle is a, a trademark for clothing, we can just simply click through here and you'll see, okay, there's a Beagle Club for footwear, Beagle Town. No, it's looking pretty good. I don't see just Beagle there. So it looks like we're good to use Beagle in our t-shirts, which it should be really. Yeah. But sometimes merch, like merch can be more extreme than the law. Yeah. Like the law says you can make parodies. I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but my <laughs> understanding is the law says you can make parodies. That's a fair use. But on Amazon, no, they are really, really strict about trademarks and they check those trademarks. So this lets you just check your ideas out before you actually upload them to merge. We've also included a few other awesome utilities like Google Translate. If you have something that you want to put into a foreign language, yeah. you can easily do that here. Um, I know a lot of people have made shirts in French or Arabic or Spanish. And this is a really simple way to generate some of those key phrases or to reverse translate them back to English. Yes. If you have something and you're not sure what it is, you can do a quick translation here. We also have Google Maps which is great if you have a city, if you wanna look up a city or a place, you can check out what Google Maps has to say about it. And of course you can get dictionary definitions, synonyms and so on. So that's the Explorer, really, really powerful tool. So let's look a little bit more at the niche machine. One thing I love is that we've put a lot of holidays into this. So for example, if you look at Halloween, you'll see that we have a bunch of subcategories in here. We have like famous ghosts, which is great if you're doing a story, if you're doing like creepy pasta stories oh, yeah. or you're, you're putting together an ebook. You could do the top ghosts or the famous ghosts. And this gives you a list of like the most searched for ghosts. There's Slender Man up there and Bloody Mary. Well, that might be the drink, of yeah. course. But you can see kind of these are, these are a great list of sort of haunted things. And all of these could potentially be 
create space books, puzzle books, coloring books, like all kinds of products. So it, it's really, really cool. And also you have things like Halloween candy in here. We've got Google Frightgeist, which is a list of all the most popular costumes. And we've done this for all the holidays. So there's also Christmas subcategories, back to school. In back to school, we have things like the people at your school, the classes and subjects you take, the school clubs. So it's such a great place to just find ideas for t-shirts. Yes. Like everyone thinks of making a t-shirt for a teacher. What about making t-shirts for your coach or the librarian or the janitor? Like all of these people are right here in the niche machine and with all the search results. So you can see how popular those particular people are around your school. So I want to look at sports now in the niche machine because something that I've been using this for recently is I, I know people have been saying, well, I've been making t-shirts and I've put them on merch, but the problem is no one is finding them. No one is seeing my t-shirts that I've made. And I think a lot of the problem with platforms like merch is if you're making shirts for things like football, basketball. I mean, we can see it. If we go to basketball and we go products and we look on Merch by Amazon, you can see that there are 10,000 basketball shirts. Do you <laughs> think I should make a basketball shirt, um, Isaac? I, you can try. <laughs> I can try, but it's going to yeah. be hard to, to get seen among 10,000 searches. So what I like to do is actually scroll down a bit and find slightly more obscure sports like lacrosse for example there's not so many people making shirts about lacrosse but it has a huge following base jumping and there's another kite one surfing. kite surfing so i found another a sport called pesa palo and check this out it is a finnish game like baseball and they play it in canada australia all through Scandinavia, and I found out there are 700,000 expat Finns living in America, and guess how many merch shirts there were? Oh, and a quarter of a million people go to a Pesa Palo game every year. Now, guess how many merch shirts there are for Pesa Palo? How many? Have a guess. How many do we think? I don't know, 100, 200? You, you would think so. I went it to Merch like by Amazon, checked niche. out Pesa Palo. There is one shirt. There is one Merch shirt on Amazon, and it's actually just a shirt that says Finland on it. Wow. That's a niche right there. <laughs> so um, this is how you can use like the niche machine and the tangent tools to find niches that just other people have completely missed. Another place I like to look, if we go back to animals, I love this monsters and mythical creatures section. Check this out. So we know zombies mm -hmm. are like a huge thing. Everyone's really big into zombies, but I think there's too many zombies. I feel like zombies were so <laughs> You're last so year. Over it. <laughs> I, I'm kind of over zombies. So I would look through this and be like, well, okay, is there a more interesting sort of a new mythical creature we can do? So you can browse through this and you get all these great things like Cerberus and Sphinxes. I like Sphinxes. That's that's like my totem animal is a Sphinx. Check it out. Oh my gosh, Basilisk. Basilisk. Like how cool is that? We can go and look up public domain. We can go and see if like Basilisks are popular. Let's go to, I'm going to go with Wikimedia. Wikimedia, okay. Okay, because I always seem to get good results. Wikimedia is like one of my go-tos. And check it out. Here are some basilisks oh. that you could use. They're public domain pictures. These are really old. Like, let's look at this one. I love this. It's pretty cool. This is a really, really old picture. It's. I'm pretty sure this is public domain looking at it. We can get more details, find out more about it. There it is. I'm sure it's got a date on there. Oh my gosh, see from the 1500s. Yeah. So this is such a cool picture because it's public domain. It's from the 1500s. What you could do is just clean this up using maybe photo fuse, photo scissors, clipping magic. Photoshop, yeah. Right, or Photoshop. <laughs> um, and you could turn this into pretty much any kind of product. Like, you know what I love? I love Spoonflower. Spoonflower is pretty cool. Yeah, so with Spoonflower, it's a website and you can turn images into wallpaper, gift wrap, and fabric. Fabric. Yeah, mm. so like, for example, you can make basilisk 
gift wrapping. Oh, okay. That would be really that cool. Would be I would cool. love that on my if I got a birthday present in like basilisk gift wrap. That would be cool. That I'm is. so over zombies. <laughs> uh, you can make zombie gift wrap with this as well, but I, I think it's pretty exciting. So uh, I think it'd be really cool for like, like if you're giving a child like a, a video game for a present, mm-hmm. you know, you want to wrap it in like some cool mythical. Oh yeah, that would yes. be cool. Yeah, that's just another example of how you can use the niche machine just to generate these ideas, come up with things. And the great thing is it really, it, it's totally up to you, whatever you're working on. Like whatever kind of product you're making, whether you're working on a marketing campaign, whatever you are doing, this is such a great place to start, just to get brainstorming and to find what people are interested in. And often things that are overlooked, because I know when I'm working on a project, sometimes my brain just gets stuck on one track when you're just thinking, okay, zombies, that's all I can think of, zombies, zombies, zombies. It's really nice to just go through this and go, okay, there's there's other animals out there, king kong, like mermaids, right. werewolves. Okay, I didn't think of werewolves. That's like, there could be a comeback in werewolves. So this is a great place just to kind of kick your brain away from that sort of being stuck on zombies and to do something else. And also the niche machine's great because you can just, if you're really stuck, just hit random list. And there we go. Wow, this gave us warfare keywords. Oh, that's pretty cool. That that is pretty cool. So, wow, these are all the phrases associated with warfare and all the different types of warfare. This would be great if you were making a board game or a card game. Yes, You could do submarine warfare, the card game. (laughs) Whoa, I want to go make that now. That'd be pretty cool. Or make a board game with little submarines. Yeah. That's so cool. You know, there's a website, Board Game Maker, that you can go and actually make board games. Really? Print on demand uh, that, board I games. I know that. Yeah, you I, can do that. I so to look into that. Whoa, you could do print on demand board games and you could sell them on Amazon. You could list them on Amazon and drop ship them. Oh, yeah. Merchant to Amazon. Fulfilled? That would be cool. Yes. Wow. So let's take a look at one of my favorite tools in Tangent, which is the Sky Palette. Now, if you have Blue Sky Suite or you've used Blue Sky Suite, you may recognize Sky Palette. Now, this is an evolution of Sky Palette. This is really the version 2.0 with a whole bunch of new added in features. So it's super easy to use. All you're going to do, first of all, is drag and drop a picture file right here into this blank space in the middle and wait to see what happens. So I'm using the this picture of the basilisk that we found earlier. And the first thing you'll see Sky Palette does is it finds the dominant colors in this image. So you can see it's picked out here, the Pantones, Burnt Sienna, this orange color that's along the wings, the goldenrod yellow, brown, blush, and white as the dominant colors in this. And how you can use this, there are so many ways you can actually use this color palette. First of all, if you were creating a book or a journal, this would actually give you colors that you can use for the cover of your book. You can send these to your designer. And I know when I interviewed Sasha O'Hara, I know she said she was using Sky Palette to send colors to her designers to help her create the covers of her coloring books. So this is actually a very powerful tool. You can also use these colors to do things. For example, let's say you upload some fine art like uh, Van Gogh's Sunflowers or Starry Night. What you can do is use Sky Palette to pick out the, the main colors from that image and you could create a custom set of crayons if you're making a coloring bundle. You could even do things like threads or yarn for a crafting bundle. You can even use it to generate interior design palettes like paints, how you would like your room to look. Like you can use this for so many things. And what's really cool is that it creates these palettes based off different systems of color, even down to crayon colors. Like how amazing is this? I know on eBay, One thing a lot of us do on eBay is if you're selling, for example, a red dress and your buyer calls you up and says, hey, I I don't really understand exactly what kind of red this is. Is it like a pinky red or a red red? You can say, hey, well, I'm comparing it to Crayola because we know everyone's monitors look different. So colors tend to look different on different monitors. 
what you can do is say, well, I'm looking at a packet of Crayola, and if you have the Jazzberry Jam Crayon in your packet of Crayola, that's what color this is. And that's kind of a common thing that a lot of people do with eBay. So really, really powerful, but you, you've even got crayon colors with this and fun too. Uh, and you also get the additional image data here. So if the top five colors aren't enough, you can actually find the extra colors that are in this palette. So that's the olive green and the khaki and the rosy brown. So first of all, straight off the bat, this is what Sky Palette gives you. It gives you all of the colors in an image. But where this is really powerful is if you have a design or a creation or a bundle, you can just upload a picture of it into Sky Palette and it will give you a whole lot of suggestions for keywords. Like it even picks out basilisk here, mythical creature, rooster, and quite cleverly it recognizes this as being from the cover of 101 Amazing Mythical Beasts and Legendary Creatures. So we've actually learned quite a lot about this public domain picture here with just by uploading it to Sky Palette. Now, if we scroll down, you'll also see it finds a lot of other places this image was found on the web. So you can see what else it's being used for. So it looks like someone here is using this for a jigsaw puzzle. And of course we can click through and go and, and check that out and see what they're using it for. Here's the cover of this amazing mythical beasts. And this is where it gets really clever. Sky Palette also looks for similar images. There are so many ways to use this. First of all, you can use it to source more images. Maybe if this is a public domain image, you might find some more by searching for it. You may also find associated images. So if you are putting together content, for example, like an advertising campaign or a curated set of images around a particular topic, this could help you find more images that you can use in your content. You can also use it, and I'll show you how it works in a moment. You can use this to find copycat images on the web or to find alternative sourcing places to find these images. And you'll see down here, it gives you some related links as well. So you can go and find where else this picture is being used. So we can see the main use of this basilisk image is in this book, 101 Amazing Mythical Beasts, which you can find at Barnes & Noble there, Amazon, Audible, and so on. So let's take a look at some other palettes I've done with Sky Palette and some other ways of using it. So what I do is I click to My Palettes, and this has some of my stored searches. So for example, I thought this was a really interesting one. I found this picture when I was talking about coffee tastings, and I loved the colors that it generated, this orange and the lime green and the brown. I thought this would be really cool if you were making a journal around the topic of, of coffee tasting. And you can see how amazing this system is. It even knows that this was taken in Starbucks. There's a picture of espresso there, coffee, breakfast, and it finds you, there's the image match from this blog on Starbucks and just so many similar pictures, related links, huge, huge amount of information there. Let's go back to my palettes. And here's a bundle that I found on Amazon. Now this isn't my bundle, this is someone's Halloween bundle. And I'm not very sure about this little sort of spider web tacked onto it, but we'll ignore that for now. Looking at this bundle, you can see it's these gravestones and a lovely Halloween color palette there. But let's scroll down and this is where I think the keywords are very, very powerful. So I've uploaded my bundle to Amazon and I can look at these keywords and see, okay, like I would maybe describe these as gravestones, but looking down at this, this gives me words like headstone, cemetery. Like I probably wouldn't have thought of headstone as a word. I would have probably thought of cemetery, but not headstone and also tombstone. That's another great suggestion. So this really helps you to not miss keywords. Like if you look at these, you can go, okay, I'm gonna use all of these keywords to describe my bundle. Headstone, grave, cemetery, tombstone, grass. And I'm sure, yeah, it gives you words like Halloween and pumpkin as well, because right there, there's a little pumpkin in the image. And what's really cool is that you can find other places to source the items in this bundle. For example, you can see it's a Rakuten, Japan, Funzilla in Germany. Like these items are popping up in quite a lot of places. 
So it's a fun way to see both where your bundle, whether it's being copied elsewhere on the web, or to find other places to source these items. And in fact, look at this, Lizzie's, uh, sorry, Izzy's Party Shop Halloween decorations. We click right there and wow, I just found these tombstones for, I guess it's a, a British site, for £3.69. So if you were really low on your bundles, you couldn't find the components anywhere, Tangent can actually help you find those just by uploading an image, which is amazing. Let's go back to my palettes. And I wanna show you a couple of other cool things you can do with this. So this is actually really funny. This is a picture of my friend's cat and I uploaded it to Sky Palette just because I thought this was the cutest cat in the world. And I said to Isaac, I would love a cat like this. I wonder what it is. Put it into Sky Palette and it actually tells you it could be a Norwegian forest cat, a Gian cat, or a ragamuffin. And I think it actually is a ragamuffin cat. So pretty amazing work by Sky Palette here, especially if you're trying to find keywords for your product. And look at these other little cats it's found that are very similar, which is very, very cute. Let's do one more. I want to show you how this works with t-shirts. So I have some cat t-shirts here. Let's view this one. So this is a popular design. I know it's showing up on a lot of sites and there's a lot of similar sites around and it's a cat eating a pizza and a taco. So let's take a look at what kind of keywords Sky Palette found for us. So indeed it recognizes, okay, there's a taco and a pizza in this picture. It's a cat. It's a t-shirt, could be a kitten, and it gives you a whole bunch more of suggestions here. Fashion, pillow, fur, sequins, orange, pink. Always helpful to have the colors in there sometimes when people are looking for colors for particular products. But here's where it's really powerful is that it's showing us other places you could find that t-shirt. And you can see it's listed in a whole lot of stores. And in fact here, Paragon Apparel, Cats and Bacon products, there we go. There's the shirt right there on Paragon Apparel. It looks like it's also on Rage On, Cute Dose, and even Shopify, people have got it on Shopify. So this is a, an amazing tool that will tell you so many things about any image you upload. It gives you the colors, it gives you keywords, it finds this image elsewhere on the internet, so you can find out if people are copying your design, if they're using it for other purposes, and it tells you even cool things, like if we go back to our collected palettes, you can see I uploaded this public domain image of, well actually, let's find out who it, it is of. It is Jane Austen, awesome. So this actually recognizes particular people who are in images. This is Jane Austen here, and you can find more public domain images of her. And also, this is great if you are building up a book or you are building up maybe homeschool materials about Jane Austen, this can go and help you find other sources to find more information about her. For example, Wikipedia, you can go and learn about Jane Austen there. Birmingham Mail, there's a story about her here. Basingstoke Gazette, all the different places that this image has been used. So a really, really awesome tool there. That is the Sky Palette. So I want to show you one last example, which is this cool robot that I've been using. And this robot, I believe, is royalty free. You can use it for notebooks, for children. You can use it for story paper. You can put it on things like gift wrap, greetings cards, all kinds of uses for this cute robot picture. But what I really love with Tangent is that everything is clickable. So if you're browsing down, and I love these robots, it finds, wow, look, other people have been using this for their books. You can see there's like an Italian book. I think that's Italian. All kinds of other pictures of that robot there. Pixabay, which is where I think I actually found that picture. And it's being used for robotics expos as well. But what is really cool in Tangent that I wanted to show you, everything is clickable. So if you want to find out more about robots or robotics, you can click straight here and go explore robotics. So, I mean, we could go to usa.gov and see what the government have published about robotics. Brilliant, NASA. And we know that most information on NASA's websites is in the public domain. So this is 
awesome. This is such a quick way to go and find out more about a particular topic. We can also look for more visuals and even, even the colors are clickable. So if, for example, we like forest green, we want more pictures that are forest green, you could go to say Flickr using the Tangent Explorer. It will even find you, look, there you go. There's actual forest green color there and some pictures of forests and things that are forest green and just absolutely incredible. You can find your own ways to use this. You could use this in your art projects to create collages, to put together any kind of digital graphics, graphical collages, digital collages, all kinds of things you can do with this. So really, really awesome system. So let's take a look at tangent words, which is very similar to our previous Skywords tool. Now, tangent words is a keyword tool. It's really used to generate suggested keywords. So let's take a look at how it works. It's very straightforward, very simple to use. So let's say, for example, that you created a piece of art of a character, let's say a flamingo. Flamingo, okay. Let's say you, you designed a flamingo or you found a lovely bit of public domain art that's a flamingo and you have no idea how to use it. You thought, well, this would, I know this would work well on a product, but I don't know what kind of product to put it on. What you can do is go to Tangent Words, type in flamingo, do a quick search and give it a moment to load. And it gives you a whole bunch of information about flamingos, a whole bunch of keyword suggestions about flamingos. And what this is doing is it's looking at several different marketplaces and search engines and finding the most popular suggested products yes. and keywords. Now, one thing I want to say here is that a lot of keyword tools are offering search volumes from Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I want to say there is no such thing. If you see any tool that's claiming it's calculating search volume from Amazon, it is not. It is impossible to do this unless you are Jeff Bezos or a very close <laughs> associate of him. Amazon do they not give, give out up. search no. volume by fair means or yeah. black hat means. Yeah, it's just not available. So no. if anyone is telling you that they are giving you Amazon keyword search volume, they are making it uh, up. <laughs> it is fictional. So we don't do that. That's why we don't give you search volume. I mean, we could make it up. We, we thought about it and then we thought we don't do that. <laughs> so what we did instead is we drew this from different marketplaces. Mm -hmm. we, we pulled information from a whole lot of different marketplaces and we created our own algorithm to assess the popularity of each search using different marketplaces. So this is what we've come up with. It's a color-coded list of keywords and you can see here, it's found 670 entries for Flamingo. So this is amazing for giving you inspiration for what to do with your Flamingo. So for example, Flamingo shower curtain. Oh. I know that you can make those on Zazzle. Oh really? Yeah, That's on really Zazzle cool. you can put together shower curtains you can probably do a bunch of these other things. iPhone cases, okay. that's the most popular mm -hmm. search. Then a shirt. Flamingo floats, we saw a lot of those at ASD. Yeah. Those are the pool floats, the, the inflatable pool floats. Yeah. Fabric, you mm -hmm. can do that with Spoonflower. There's okay. a website, Spoonflower, that you can make fabric, wallpaper, and sell it print on demand, which is awesome. Flamingo dress, you can make dresses on Redbubble. You can? Yeah, have, you can oh, do wow. the all over print and they're really oh, cool. That's pretty so, cool. I mean, like, this is so simple. You've got your picture of a flamingo that your friends created, your artists created for you, and you're like, hmm, what do I do with this? So, let, I like flamingo dress. So, let's go and see if we can get some ideas about flamingo dress. Now, we can look it up on Zazzle or Redbubble mm -hmm. and see if there are any there. But you know what I like to do? I like polyvore. Now, Polyvore is probably one of my favorite fashion sites. And here's something cool about Polyvore. You can set up your own collages on Polyvore. And I made a video about how to uh -huh. do that. So you can, sh you can actually show people a curated collection of your products on Polyvore. You can use it to market your products. So oh. that's something I really like doing. Watch my video on YouTube about mm -hmm. that if you're interested, because it's cool. So let's see if Polyvore has anything for flamingo dresses. Oh, there we go. Look, this one and this one. Oh my gosh, oh, wow. is that flamingos? We got to check this out. Let's have a look right. at this. 
So I think we're on something with Black flamingo dress. Degrade floral. No, look at that. Wait, it's going to load mm -hmm. up. Wow, oh, there it is. I, so I think it. there's little flamingos on there. You see them? It's, yeah. Oh, it's at least flamingo style, I guess. It is. So, and look at that, 1100 Isaac, are you going to buy me a flamingo dress for my birthday? <laughs> I, I think you should. So, I mean, this is so cool. We can actually go, that looks like a flamingo dress too. Oh, and look at this one. Oh, that's a That's cool my one. favorite. Yeah, I like that one. That's what I was thinking. I'm, I'm like cheap. That. I just, the $30 yeah. flamingo dress, that would do me. Is that um, kind of like a 60s? Uh, yeah, I'd say pin up. I'd say that oh, okay. kind of look. But there you go. Like, how cool is this? So you can do the same thing. You can go look it up on Redbubble or Zazzle and mm -hmm. see what flamingo styles are on there. And again, I mean, if you want to go and sort of make, come up with some puns or something funny, acrostics, it makes acronyms. Oh, yes. It does all of these things to make any kind of design you like. So you can really create your design with this. We could go sourcing for flamingos. We can mm -hmm. find pictures. We can find anything. And what's nice here is that you can actually go to the table view of the keywords and we can save the things we're interested in making. So we can save all our ideas here, like flamingo fabric. Okay, mm -hmm. I might want to make that on spoon flower, flamingo dress. And here we give the tangent rank our own algorithm and it's out of 100. So the most search things will give you 100, that to zero, I mm -hmm. guess. So we can save all the most interesting ideas we have there. Flamingo balloon. I wonder if you can do printed balloons. I bet you can. Oh, I bet yeah. there's a, a site you can do flamingo balloons. Flamingo wall art. You can definitely do that. Red bubble. I think most of the print on demand sites do wall art. Flamingo romper. Hey, uh, I'm a big fan of the rompers. Wow. I think I'm going to put that. Um, and so then these are all ideas. Oh, and there's apron there as well. We know the on demand course. Yes. We, we made aprons. And you can do that using print aura. Mm -hmm. So there we go. We'll put that in there as well. And now what's fantastic is like you can just go explore these ideas here. So we explained that you can't get Amazon search volume, but I have a really awesome tool that I like to use. I'm, we don't have any affiliation with it. It's not our product, but I really like it. I've tested it a lot and I really like it. It's called Keywords Everywhere and it's free. And this is what you can do. You can go to bulk upload keyword it's a free extension you install it on your chrome browser and this gives you space to put keywords so what i do is go to the data view and i'm going to copy these and i'm going to paste those into keywords everywhere they're comma separated so they're ready to go and there they are check it out this gives you the search volumes from so cool. google so that's pretty awesome i i really like using this tool so it's not our tool but this is the keywords everywhere and it just works really, really well with this. Keywords everywhere actually also works well with the Google Keyword Planner, with Google Trends, with Uber Suggest, uh, Suvla, and Answer the Public and probably a lot of other ones yeah. as well. But what I really like with Keywords Everywhere is it goes and finds these Google search volumes, which are kind of hard to find these days because Google keep hiding them and then bringing <laughs> them back, hiding them, bringing yeah. them back. And these guys have extracted those. So there we go. That's a cool way to just double check what you're doing. Make sure there's an interest in it. And obviously, it looks like almost 3,000 people are looking for flamingo fabric every mm -hmm. month. 5,000 address. These are pretty accurate search results, as I say. I mean, I've seen a lot of the tools that are yeah. around for keyword search volume for Amazon. And they produce crazy results. Yeah, like, like they might say Flamingo dress uh, 50,000 searches a month. And you'd be like, there's, there's not 50,000. <laughs> like, um, usually searches are a lot lower than you think. Yeah. And a lot of the other tools that claim to give Amazon search results, massively, massively inflated. So this, this is more accurate. This is coming from Google, which is not the same as Amazon. I mean, we know that. Yeah. Like uh, Google searches and Amazon searches are a little bit different. But as there's no way of getting that Amazon data, Google is probably your best bet. Yeah. And a lot of people actually go to Amazon from Google because Amazon is very highly ranked by Google. Mm -hmm. So when you Google things, a lot of the time, the first few results will be from Amazon. So they're pretty close. And I really like using it that way. So we built in this data search in Tangent. So you can copy these keywords 
into anything you like. And of course, you can copy these directly into your Amazon listing. Okay, so let's say we've got pencil cases and we've already gone and bought our pencil cases from Walmart. And this is great because this gives us all those little keywords that mm -hmm. we might have forgotten, like for girls, for kids, school. Uh, if you're selling this case on Amazon and you're just not sure what words people use to describe a pencil case, you can just find them here and then you can copy this directly just copy and paste and you can put that directly into your Amazon listing. So it's pretty cool. You probably want to, you don't want to repeat pencil case too many yeah, times. You have to edit it, so you'd yeah. have to edit that, but pretty cool. It it's is. a really good way of getting a lot of keywords. So going back to our flamingo example, I've got to show people what you did with this because this is so cool. I love this. And this is very similar to the sky AI function in sky tools. Mm -hmm. And it's using artificial intelligence to generate information about flamingos. And this is really cool because it tells you what a flam flamingo is. It's a pink bird that eats shrimp. And what I love about this is if I'm coming up with an idea for, say, a birthday card about flamingos, this makes me think that it eats shrimp. I never thought about that. Yeah, so, I, I, mean, I didn't know boom, that. Boom, <laughs> I have a birthday card idea now because I could be like, I love you more than a flamingo loves shrimp. shrimp. <laughs> like, it, it gives you these really quick ideas. And it, I love that it's kind of like flamenco. Like, I, I flamenco like a flamingo. Like, that's a t-shirt right yeah, there with a, fl a flamingo flamenco. It, it gives you rhymes. Okay. Like, this gringo knows a flamingo. Or... And speaks all the right lingo. <laughs> and speaks the right lingo. Like, this gives Bingo. you... This, this creates slogans and, and concepts for you. It's so, so cool. And it even gives you definitions right there. So let's look at another bird-related example. We put in owl, and you can see, like, again, all the most popular things, our necklace, our earrings, our decor. Oh, now sorry. I want to make owl wallpaper on Spoonflower. <laughs> I think that'd be really, really cool. You can click down again to related words. So looking through these related words for owl, I love the, oh my gosh, angry clouds. Is, <laughs> like, who calls owls angry clouds? Is that a thing? Bird of Minerva, I think, is really interesting. Let's click that and see what that is, because I've never heard that I, expression, yeah, like Bird of Minerva. So let's Google it. Hey, there it is, the owl, owl of Athena, Athena or owl of, of Minerva. Minerva. Oh, okay. And I love this picture. How gorgeous oh, wow. is that? Like, this just keeps you going with ideas, pictures, things you can use in your books. It's like, it's so, so powerful. And there you go. This gives you all the information on owls that you could want. And I love how it makes you think about things like owls. Oh, owls hear a mouse. An owl can see in the dark. It can spot the snow. That's very specific. Spot the snow tracks. This is what mice. happens when the computers take over, Isaac. This is what happens when you mess with artificial <laughs> intelligence. Elon Musk was right. I, <laughs> okay, they're capable. They can hear the slightest rustle. They can spot prey, spot mice. It's, wow. it's pretty awesome. And look at all the rhymes. You've got uh, scowl, prowl. I prowl like an owl. Uh, <laughs> I don't think owls prowl. On the prowl. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm an owl on the prowl. Oh, wow, yes. Hey, there's our t-shirt. Cool, we've got it. So it, it, this is such a powerful, cool tool that you can yeah. use for this. And hooters and... I mean, like, if hooters had had this, they could have come up with this idea <laughs> right here. That's that's how they could have generated yeah. this. So this is really your idea so generator. let's take a look at the last tool in Tangent, which is the formalizer. Now, we developed this tool to help you generate magic formulas. We made it as part of our magic formulas course. And the point of magic formulas was to develop your own brands and systems that you can really sell anywhere, that you can sell on your own website, that you can turn into books, you can turn into products. Really what they are are systems that you can monetize. And we looked at a lot of brands and how they worked. Like for example, Weight Watchers. All they did really was put together the concept of a support group with points on food. Yeah. And that's really the, the magic formula of Weight Watchers is putting those points, making food worth points. And really what it's doing is gamifying food, gamifying yes. how you eat. eat yes. um, and a lot of big brands and systems now are really just gamifying simple things, uh, simple activities, everyday activities, or seasonal events or life transitions like weddings, birthdays, like pinatas is a way of gamifying a birthday. Right. Like if you have a pinata, that's a fun thing to do on your birthday. 
at some point someone created that idea and now you see them in like every walmart everywhere yes um so the that's kind of why we developed it but really this is a huge creativity buster you can use it to unblock your creativity when you're developing anything it could be a brand a system a product a marketing campaign all kinds of things so let's take a look at how it works okay so the first list that you have here is an event so often you'll probably want to go with everyday activities and these can be things like eating babysitting bathing cleaning house and game mechanics is the creative prompt so all the formulizer is is two lists and what you're doing is intersecting these two lists so for example if we say cleaning house and we want to intersect that with drinking boom we can create a drinking game about cleaning the house every time you like clean every time you dust the ceiling every cobweb you get you take a shot, a shot. You and go. you can turn that into every room dice. you clean every floor you can turn that into a spinner game playing cards like you could create this and call it the clean drunk cleaning that's my game drunk cleaning i, I, yes. I like this idea i and think i want to play you can have cleaning. one for people that love beer so you have a collection of beer right. and then every time you have a, you accomplish a task you can drink a specific beer or wine <laughs> and i mean or the, spirits <laughs> with this i mean you could do listening to music and collecting like you could come up with new ways to maybe keep track of your mp3 collection your music collection the, the favorite songs you listen to so you could do like music spotting and you can make a journal oh so this is what i might do i might create a journal on create space where every song i listen to i have prompts that ask me to talk more about the music you know how when you like actively listen to music you mm -hmm. get more from it so what i might do with my journal on create space is say Okay, what emotions did this music give me? What did I hear? What does the singer, like, what do I think about the singer's voice? What do I think about? And it, it, it could ask you different prompts. So when you're singing, uh, when you're listening to music, you can write more about oh. it. And you can really sort of think about the music and, and put more information down about the music. Like, I think that would be a cool journal. That, yeah, think? yeah, I think so. I mean, people, they, they're so, they love music. Like, people are really into it. And it touches on so many emotional levels. Right. That, and I think a lot of the time people don't listen to music. Whereas like a really cool gift for someone who loves music would be something that actually prompts them to listen harder, to listen, sort of be more engaged. Yes, yes. And they ask know them the lyrics, questions. the people behind who wrote it, why yes. did they write it. Yes. So you could say when was, yeah, like there's so many questions you could ask. Mm -hmm. um, like when when was this song released? What does it make you think about? How does it what, make you feel? How does right. it make you feel? What does it remind you of? What memories does it conjure? And that would be such a great gift at Christmas. Like it, that would be such a fun That's thing. That's pretty cool. That so it be. gives you like writing prompts as well. So That's you can see Isaac was typing our idea in there and you can really use these cards and so when you click two of these things it generates a card and it gives you a, a random beautiful picture as well so, so you can use the picture or ignore the picture if the picture helps you by thinking okay pathways journeys if it inspires you use the picture if it doesn't just ignore it and use these uh, use I don't know, maybe we can incorporate this idea with on a road trip so you're on a road oh, trip hey listening to music and uh, maybe you have a recorder so you give people a collection of prompts to, to answer on a recorder that's an interesting idea yeah so. or you could do a road trip play uh, playlist yes logger yes oh what about yeah i get i get it so you could like record all the songs you listen to on a, on a road trip for example mm -hmm. that's a really cool idea and that would be a really nice gift as well like yes. if you went on a road trip with someone then it, it could it could log all the songs you listen to, like Shazam them maybe. Oh, yes, that'd and be really cool. And it could save them all and then send them to someone. Oh, that's really cool. And this would make a great Here's our app. soundtrack going to Colorado. Yeah, I think this would be a really <laughs> cool app on your phone I can to see like that. log yeah. all the songs you listen to. So this is just such a great way of generating a bunch of ideas. And what I recommend is to find one intersect and try and come up with three or four or five ideas. Like just keep doing what Isaac and I are doing and generate as many ideas as you can. What else can you think of about collecting and listening to music? Well, what about maybe concert memorabilia? Like you can make wristbands for people that 
they've gone to a certain concert, maybe they could have, oh, you can make a stand or, or like a holder for them to keep all their wristbands on. Oh, okay. Or something, or a display, Dis- a wristband. Because when you go to festivals, maybe not concerts, but festivals, they give you re- wristbands to wear. You could have a display for, like, all your old Glastonbury. Uh, they're all crusty because they're covered in mud yeah, yeah, from yeah, the yeah. festival. You could have a display for them. Oh. So I'm going to put that in there as well. So this is such a good way to save your ideas, to come yes, up with a bunch yes. of ideas. And then when you're done, you can just save this. And you can share it with your friends. You can send it to someone. So it's a great way of saving your ideas, like really generating your ideas and storing them. And then if you scroll up. So if uh, I go up, you can actually see all my magic formulas here. So you can see we've got the everyday activities down here. We also have life transitions and seasonal events. So life transitions are things like birthdays, weddings, coming of age, arrivals, departures. There's lots dozens of life transitions in here and also seasonal events we have things like halloween christmas summer vacation pretty much all the calendar events are in here in in your events and then for creative prompts you can see here these are the game mechanics so game mechanics are one way of generating a magic formula but also we've included perspectives what would a 20 year old do what would a dog do what would a politician do what would a scientist do and this is just a way of really generating new ideas and being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes and see things a different way so for example if you did gardening what would a boss do so how can you make your gardening really efficient and this is great this actually came up (laughs) with a picture that's kind of relevant of a little little outdoor porch but, you, but it's a way of really generating a different perspective on these activities. What what would a boss do with gardening? Like they they find a way they, to make it would, very efficient. They'd efficient, outsource. They would. They they'd would, hire someone else. They would bribe their kids. They bribe their kids. <laughs> well, no, I, I feel like you could do. You could outsource. You can make a book to, of like things you could outsource around the oh, house. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I think it's key to. Allow yourself to do some lateral thinking with this. Mm -hmm. Like if you come up with an idea that's like, okay, I like the idea of having a log where you can maybe, oh, you know, so you know, like people were making password books to keep a list of all your passwords. Mm -hmm. What if you had a list of all the contractors, like your your cleaning people, your gardener, the um, the, the pool guy, the guy that picks up all the dog poop. Right, yeah, all of yeah. those people. <laughs> you, you, you had to bring it down to that yeah. level, Isaac. Um, but what if you had a list of all those people and then you'd have their phone numbers and you'd never lose them? That would actually be a great product. Like the oh. password list. That book was like really high on Amazon. Oh, people wow. were buying a lot of just a log of passwords. What if you had a log of all the people that do work around your home? Yeah, yeah. That, I, I could see that being very useful. So allow yourself to... Be lateral with this. Like you don't have to stick with gardening. If if, if you go off on a tangent, that's what that's it's about. What it's that's about. that's yeah. what we do is go off on a tangent. So you can write down your ideas here and then save them. So for example, we could put our contractor logging address book and we can save this. And the great thing is now if we save that, we can actually go to my magic formulas, click there, and it gives us the magic formulas that we've stored already. So you can go back and look at what you've saved. So there was the music one mm-hmm. we were working on, there's the gardening one, and you can keep generating these. So there's a couple of other things in the formulizer if we go back to it. We also have system structures. Now, system structures is really nice because if you're trying to come up with, and, and this is really good for things like a t-shirt idea or like a slogan, a marketing campaign, a blogging aid. Like if you're trying to, like let's say I'm running my Facebook group and I need to come up with a new idea of some content to generate. Like this is really, really good for content generation. If I'm trying to come up with an idea for my Facebook group, I can look through this list of system structures and it gives me things like make a list of facts. What about a floor plan? Think about height, pyramids, towers, ladders. So you can do like ladder to a million. And you can do, how am I going to make a million dollars? And you can design well, it as a ladder. What am I going to start with and keep going yeah, on? Yeah, or you can yeah. do Catherine's skyscraper of riches. 
like you can you can come up with so many ideas of this like if you had a let's say you have a facebook group about dogs and people who show their dogs you have a facebook group for people who show dogs i mean you could do reward badges and awards so you could do on once a week you give a reward or an award to whoever posts the best dog picture or the best picture of their dog so this gives you these ideas very very quickly here that you can use in your magic formulas star charts i mean that that could be cool if you're like trying to create content about cleaning cleaning the house what about a star chart what about putting that into your into your blog about house cleaning you could make a printable mm-hmm. star chart of like i cleaned this part of the house today or you can make a star chart for anything you can make a star chart for i don't know how many trips you've taken how much Gas you've saved by oh, yeah, walking. That's, that's like there's cool. all yeah, kinds yeah, of things yeah. you could log as a star chart. And you can see these are just different structures you can use, particularly in your content generation. We also have metaphors. So you, you can intersect these activities with a metaphor. Like what if you saw a birthday as a color palette? What color would your birthday be? Mm. I mean, what if, I don't know, what if you saw eating as a beehive? <gasps> Oh my gosh, so you can make, you know how like beehives are like hexagon shaped? Yeah, yeah. You can make, you know, bento boxes. Mm-hmm. What if you had like a beehive bento box that looks like a little, like a series yeah, 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 of yeah. hexagons and you could put a little bit of measured food into your beehive lunchbox. Oh, I've just invented a lunchbox. Really? That's that's Ooh. how we use magic for Call it like the honey box or something. The honey box. <laughs> We, we can retire now. We're just going to we, go. get the box. honey box made and we are good to go. So th- this is how you use this tool. And then, of course, we put in Catherine's creativity mm-hmm. on blockers. And this just asks you a bunch of questions to just change, shift your perspective to somewhere else, like make a bad guy. And I think we talked about this in the, the other video we made about tangent. But we watched a play a couple of years ago. And it was about the pink robots. I think it was oh, Yosh- yes, Yoshimi yes. battles the pink robots. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so in this play, there was a girl, Yoshimi, and she was diagnosed with cancer. She had, I think she had leukemia. And the doctors told her to imagine the, I don't know, the cancer as pink robots mm-hmm. and said, okay, you've got to get your white blood cells strong. You have the white robots and they have to battle the pink, the pink robots. robots. So what they did was they made a bad guy. They, they visualized cancer as pink robots Mm -hmm. and Yoshimi had the white robots and so it turned into like an epic comic book battle and the reason was that they they made cancer into a bad guy and this kind of concept would work so well for a product for children like if a child was sick with something you could explain it to them perhaps using like a bad guy as an example there's so many other things like make a new hero Make it much bigger, much, much, like you can, you can expand up. ideas, put it into black and white, make it scary, make it really old. These are my creativity on blockers. Oh, oh that... make it bigger. So for our, our honey bento, what if we had them where the, the hexa... The, the hexagonal boxes. Right, what if they're like little boxes that you put on your refrigerator? Oh, that's a cool idea. And so... you have like all these like... You can put them... And then you can store things in them. That's a cool idea. On your refrigerator. So you can see, the, like, this is what the, this, this tool does, is that it really just gives you ways to keep developing ideas and to keep brainstorming. And it really develops your creativity. Like you just use this, go with it, and try to sort of follow the ideas, and you will come up with so many more things. And the other thing I would say is keep going with this. Like, don't just say great i've got one idea i'm done yeah keep thinking on a theme because sometimes your third or your fourth idea will be the best right and also you can keep refining right uh, your ideas and and, i mean we came up with the honey boxes the Mm. honey lunch boxes the honey fridge shelves like we could keep developing this idea to come up with like honey storage boxes so you could have stackable storage Mm. or maybe a cake system that you you could put like, like the layers of your cake into the different yes. honeycomb boxes. Like there's so many different ways to keep developing your idea. And this is what I love with this. Now we've looked at all the different ways of making a formula. You can just get Formulizer to do it for you. 
So I, I don't know about Ramadan and animal traits. <laughs> that's, that's a weird one. Let's go with Thanksgiving and, and puzzle, puzzle solving. solving. Now, I, you see, that's an interesting one. Like, what oh. about Thanksgiving treasure hunt? Yeah. Boom. There we go. There we see go. clues. So when all the family come round, you could have a treasure hunt to find all the elements of your Thanksgiving dinner. Ooh, see? that's pretty cool. There's, see, there's, 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 yeah. Or you could have the Thanksgiving family game. So you can make maybe a Thanksgiving puzzle book for the family, or you can make like a jigsaw puzzle. Jigsaw puzzle. Nobody can eat until you solve this. Oh, that would be terrible. Oh, my gosh. No, that yes. would be awful. I can smell the turkey, but no, I just need this last puzzle piece. <laughs> so, like, this, oh, my gosh. I, I love this. Like, you can go on all day with this. Praying. What would, would someone, someone in jail, jail do? do? Oh, my gosh. Pray for freedom. Pray for the family, for loved ones. Maybe pray for the people they hurt. So, Okay, so there's a journal right there. A therapy. There's yeah. a prayer book. You could do prayer beads for like a gift for someone who's gone to jail. And you know what's what's crazy about this? There are so many Facebook support groups for spouses of people in jail. It's like oh, it's wow. it's a That's huge a thing. thing. Yeah. It's a big like it's a, it's one of those niches that people don't really talk about, but it's a big big niche, like providing for people who are in jail mm -hmm. or finding a connection. Like, not an illegal one, not like, here's your light, <laughs> here's your shiv in a, in a Bible. That's not no, what we're doing. that you could create for people who are going to jail. Right. Or, and or maybe is... a jail preparation. Like, because sometimes jail, right, people right. know they're going to jail and they're putting everything in order. Yeah. So they, they could this... have... This is the the serendipity of this is so amazing. I mean, it was, it was random. This this is a random script that pulls these two things together. It's completely random, and it's so crazy because I mean, I know jail is a place. Is, is when people are in jail, that's like something praying is like an activity. It's kind of important, right? Yeah. So I mean, you can go on all day con conjuring a formula, listening to music it goes back to our other as a path. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's pretty. There's thousands, thousands of magic formulas. Wedding. <laughs> What's the backstory? Make it up. Oh my gosh! I think that's a card game right there. How funny is that? You can create. Oh ship! You call it ship. Shipping. How do shipping. you ship people? Yes. Oh my gosh! You get random okay, people. so my celebrities. Maybe. So so our daughters they have they're they're really into like shipping people. So they're like, this person would get on with this person. And they do it with fictional characters. So it's like when people get Harry Potter and Hermione and they say they'd make a nice romantic couple. That's called shipping. Or like Princess Peach should really be with Sonic the Hedgehog. That's so weird. That's not even the same species. <laughs> so anyway, you find two people that you ship. What if you had like the shipping game and you could play it at weddings? Oh, and yeah. you make up your story of how did you ship? How are you oh, oh yeah so instead of we're just like oh we met an improv class we're like we met on a dark night on a boat in the middle of the sea <laughs> and you just create like it could be a game this is an awesome game we need to develop this <laughs> game Isaac I like it so you can go on all night with the yes, um, yes. formulizer with ideas. but there it is that's the the formulizer in tangent and of course one thing that's really cool with the formulizer is that you can click on any of these ideas here. So like balancing, for example, you can click right there and it takes you to the Explorer. So the Explorer works all the way through uh, the, the tangent system.